Travis Wayne Goodsell. So, I still remember being on a mission to the New York, New York mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about. And of course, uh, we called those who were investigating the church investigators. Clever name, huh? And, uh, and so with modern technology, people are able to do homework after visits from the missionaries and be able to interrogate and quiz the missionaries on all things that they are trying to talk about or not talk about. I think that's probably why the majority of the little kid missionaries, as uh, they're younger than I was when I went on my mission, just by a year, but but uh, I'm hearing that many more are coming home early because they can't emotionally handle it. And uh, back in my day of abusive peers, they uh, it was considered a shame and a humiliation if you were unable to complete a full-time mission. You had to have some kind of a physical uh, accident or physical condition to have to legitimately come home early. But regardless, let's, in the modern technology, investigate the church. We'll put ourselves in the role of an investigator. And so the missionaries come over, they ask the golden question, have you ever read the Book of Mormon? And so I say, no, I don't know anything about it. We'll assume I know nothing of the church, that I've not heard anything about it. I don't watch CNN or read CNN and hear about the fast facts of Mormonism that are incorrect. And so I've not been biased one way or the other. And I'm a hardcore Mountain Dew drinker. So there's going to be a word of wisdom issue. <laughs> but not in the beginning. <laughs> and, uh, and so they give me a copy of the Book of Mormon for free. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> and so... I uh, open up the book, and of course they've tried to bias my interpretation by taking me directly to uh, Third Nephi chapter 11, that Jesus Christ comes to the native Indians of America during the classical period, so it's not ancient America. Supposedly when Lehi leaves, comes to America, yeah, that's ancient. Sort of. That's right on the cusp of ancient and classical. But because of the Persian period, yeah, we can call it ancient. And so, uh, yeah, there's, there's going to be a problem with me. I'm going to be in trouble with their investigations because I'm an anthropologist of the ancient Middle East. So, wow, I, I, I'm red flagged in their missionary investigator records. Maybe trouble. <laughs> and of course I'd have to be another excuse as to why I am because I am because of the church. So I begin reading. I don't bother with the introduction and all of that, trying to bias my understanding of the book. I want to get right into the book, because I'm an anthropologist of the ancient Middle East. They're saying that this is from an ancient golden plates. And so I want to, I'm excited to read this. I'm getting kind of hopeful that, but yet at the same time suspicious. 
because why haven't I heard of this before? So, yeah, I don't want to read anything but the main text. I'm going to use science to investigate. Uh-oh, trouble. And so even though they have me read Moroni chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, I'm going, wait a minute, no, it says manifest. That's a physical. <laughs> what are you talking about, a spiritual feeling? <clears throat> but nonetheless, I'm distracted with ancient records. And so an account of Lehi and his wife, Sariah, and his four sons being called, beginning at the eldest, Laman, Lemuel, Sam, and Nephi. And so I recognize those as, as uh, Hebrew. Uh, even Sam, even though it doesn't have the L attached to it, I still recognize that it's a variation of Shem, meaning the name. And so Shem is the son of Noah. So I'm aware of this. I, I'm aware of the Bible. And so the Lord warns Lehi to depart, da -da -da, da -da -da -da, depart out of the land of Jerusalem, because he prophesieth unto the people concerning their iniquity, and they seek to destroy his life. And so, yeah, I'm kind of wondering. I, I'm not a Mormon. I'm an anthropologist of the ancient Middle East, and Mormons, when they find out who I am, they red flag me and they seek to destroy my life and silence me on YouTube. So, yeah, I'm kind of concerned, but never heard about the church, never heard about the Book of Mormon. This is my first time, and they're now saying that there's ancient golden plates. So I want to know. And so... Even Bruce Armour Conkey. Well, no, that's not Bruce Armour Conkey. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> not Bruce. This is in the in the preface part, the introduction part, that was supposedly on the plates. This is part of the Book of Mormon. And even in here, it tells us. It's so frustrating. He taketh three days' journey into the wilderness with his family, and Nephi take, taketh his brethren and returneth to the land of Jerusalem after the record of the Jews, which is comparable to the Bible. It just has more records in it. But, uh, yeah, they counter their sufferings. They take the daughters of Ishmael, the wife. And they take their families and depart into the wilderness, their sufferings and afflictions in the wilderness, the course of their travels. They come to large waters. Nephi's brethren rebel against him. He confoundeth them, buildeth the ship. Call the name of the place Bountiful. Oh, the same name of the place that Jesus appears. Is it in that little uh, place in Saudi Arabia? Where Iraq and the waters come? Is that where? <laughs> they cross the large waters into the promised land and so forth. This is according to the account of Nephi, or in other words, I, Nephi, wrote this record in the learning of the Jews, just like the, the Bible that they get. All right, so yeah, Bruce Armour Conkey put in 600 BCE. It's 597, by the way. If it were literal history. <laughs> if. But, I, Nephi, having been born of goodly parents, therefore I was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father. And having seen many afflictions in the course of my days, nevertheless, having been highly favored of the Lord in all my days, yet having a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of God, so I know they're talking about temple initiations. You didn't? Oh. I thought that was common knowledge. I didn't know it was exclusive to anthropologists of the ancient Middle East. Therefore, I make my record of the proceedings in my days. So 
So yeah, I heard too many complaints that there's no temple rituals described in here. Wrong. And so, yeah, I'm getting kind of excited here. So, verse 2. Yea, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews. What? In the language of the Egyptians. I'm an anthropologist in the ancient Middle East. I know what this means. And the missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints told me that the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ. So, something's wrong. My red flags are going off now. Now I understand why their red flags went off. Either the Book of Mormon is a fraud, or the missionaries are lying to me. Both cannot be true. Because the religion of the Jews is not Christianity. And so, yes. Now I gotta figure out why is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints promoting a Jewish book but calling it Christian? Something's not right. And so as I continue to read through the Book of Mormon, I see that it's not specifically Orthodox Judaism that they're referring to, but Jewish Kabbalah. And thus the sign in the heavens here at the beginning, which as an anthropologist of the ancient Middle East, I'm aware of how they constructed their scriptures and know that this is a sign in the heavens and that it comes from Revelation chapter 12 and that the date is 23rd September 2017 and that even the Book of Mormon confirms what I already knew that it's a book of prophecy about the latter days and they're giving the date of the latter days exactly as the book of Revelation in chapter 12 and in all those so-called Gospels, which were actually written by the Jews, replaced by Christians. So yes, I'm getting very concerned that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is pulling the same stunt on the Book of Mormon that Christians did with the Jewish Bible. They replaced the Jewish religion the Jewish scripture interpretation, and the Jewish Christ. And so my red flags are that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is anti-Semitic. So not only have the little missionaries lied to me, they're lying to cover up that they're a hate group. Now, do you see why our missionaries are going home depressed? And so, it's necessary then to try to figure out the origins of the church. Because I read through the Book of Mormon, and this is awesome, as Jewish, Kabbalistic, prophetic, revelatory scripture. Book of Mormon, true. Using science. Huh. I didn't have to read, ponder, pray, and get a spiritual feeling. 
science confirm that the Book of Mormon is true as Jewish Kabbalistic literature? And so I'm not connected to the internet. I have to plug in. <laughs> so instead, we'll uh, take you to the origins of church history from the scriptures here. And so, yeah, I'm Google searching, trying to find out origins of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And they take me to Joseph Smith and the first vision and, and connect me to the Joseph Smith Papers. Did you know there is a Joseph Smith Papers? The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has a website of all the original documents. And so we can find out if any of the Doctrine and Covenants and the 1838 visionary accounts have any errors that need to be corrected. Oh, it's gold plates like it says. It's not golden. Oh, it's Nephi, not Moroni. Oh, it's a personage who's described as Amun, the Egyptian deity at noonday. Emmanuel, not Jesus. And yes, the Joseph Smith Papers also informs me that a guy named Willard Richards added in to the name of the church at the beginning of the 1838 visionary account, Jesus Christ. That the actual name of the church in 1838 was the Church of Latter-day Saints. As I'm learning that the church was originally called the Church of Christ. So I've got a whole bunch of questions for these missionaries when they come back in a week. Because the internet makes it real easy to do quick research. Are the missionaries going to tell me that the Joseph Smith Papers site is not authoritative? Good luck with that. The church calls it authoritative. Because Mormons get all concerned that those investigating don't go to church approved sites. The Joseph Smith Papers is church approved. Not only church approved, they call it the authoritative source. And in the authoritative source, I've gone over a whole list of stuff that needs to be changed. And there's many more changes that need to be made. There are scriptures given by Joseph Smith that were not put in. And so I'm deeply concerned about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Because I'm learning that, yes, Joseph Smith's church is, in fact, Jewish Kabbalistic. Just like the Book of Mormon. So what happened? Why is this church claiming to be a succession from Joseph Smith, but it is nothing like Joseph Smith's origins. They preached the Book of Mormon, but not the correct interpretation of the Book of Mormon. I'm deeply concerned now. And so, as I continue to learn more and find out more, I'm able to do research. I'm able to find out that Joseph Smith Sr. was a Master Mason in Canandaigua, New York, at the same time as William Morgan was there working on a book to expose the Illuminati threat to America. And they found out about him 
and locked him up, threatening his life to not proceed any further with the book. He then disappeared. The manuscript pages disappeared. Nobody could find them. Where did they go? Well, I'm able to be smart enough to figure out what happened. But, continuing my research, I find this guy named Heber C. Kimball, who was partnered with Brigham Young, who makes claims that are blatant lies. Because he claims to have gone to Canandaigua to get a, an advancement in Freemasonry and was approved, but claims that the documents were destroyed and therefore he has no other proof but his word. Well, why didn't he mention Joseph Smith Sr., the father of the founder of the church he joined in 1832 with Brigham Young? He's talking about advancing to the rank of Royal Ark, which was the rank that William Morgan had. He's talking about the anti-Mason movement, of which William Morgan disappeared. And he doesn't mention Joseph Smith Sr.? Doesn't mention the Book of Mormon? Mm-hmm. See, because I'm reading through the Joseph Smith visionary account, and I'm going, yeah, this is Jewish Kabbalistic. He's talking about Emmanuel as the Christ of the Jews. He's talking about the latter days, Revelation. And the second vision is exactly the same as the second vision of Lehi in 1 Nephi chapter 1. An exact pattern match. And in fact, Joseph Smith, his book about a prophecy of the latter days is the Book of Mormon, which also talks about another book about the latter days. And even talks about the Book of Revelation, when Nephi has his dream. Tying the Book of Mormon to the Book of Revelation. And then the brass plates, which are the Jewish scriptures, thus tying them to the revelations of the latter days. And so I want to be a part of that church. But I'm not happy with the church that has apparently assassinated the so-called founder. And they're lying to me, saying that they are a succession, that Brigham Young is the second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Because I now know that wasn't Joseph's church. Brigham Young was actually the first president of his Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mormons are lying to me. And this is a fact. This is not opinion. This is not having the wrong feeling and I just need to get the right feeling. This church is dangerous. This church is deadly. This church is criminal. Because once you've established that this church is lying to you, Everything they do is interpreted by the facts that they are false. And so tithing, it's a protection criminal racket. Their origins, they murdered their founder and replaced him. They are committing other crimes. They don't give charity. 
It's all business deals to profit off of those who are poor and needy, sick and afflicted. They give to corporations with quid pro quos rather than actually directly giving to the poor. And money laundering and SEC violations, which was in the news. Now I understand why the church was guilty of SEC violations. And I hear about the whistleblower now. Of all the tithing fraud, tax evasion. And I read in the Book of Mormon about this great and abominable church, and I'm going, that's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Because Nephi, or Joseph Smith, and in uh, the visionary account, verse 19, first vision, directly connects the great and abominable church with Christianity and Jesus. And they include the, Vat and the Vulgate text, which was the first text to include Lucifer in the passage in Isaiah with the falling star. And then I find out that the Salt Lake Temple has on the keystone the inverted pentagram of Lucifer, which means the doctrine of Lucifer are taught within the mysteries of God. And that is not Jewish Kabbalistic mysteries. That is Luciferian mysteries. And so now I'm starting to get very scared Wondering, do these little 18-year-olds know they are in Lucifer's church? Or are they just brainwashed cult followers, unaware of the truth, because they were born and raised in the church, and they aren't smart enough to use science to investigate the church, because they're told to read, ponder, pray, and get the right feeling. If they get the wrong feeling, they got to keep praying until they get the right feeling. And so then I see the abuses that are going on in the church. And I fully understand why. And then I recognize from the warnings in the Book of Mormon of the plot that they're up to for the latter days because I know we're in the latter days. I know about their seditious conspiracy, their treason, their attempts to overthrow the government so that they can restore their kingdom of Brigham Young with all of the crimes, with all of the human atrocities and abuses and And again, I'm very concerned. I don't want to see these young elders anymore. Because are they knowing participants? Or are they going to go home early because they are completely and utterly depressed? That the church isn't true after all. So, yeah, it's best that missionaries don't go to smart people. It's best that missionaries go to ignorant people. That they convert people who are not literate, who are uneducated, who are poor and desperate. Because if they go to the intelligent, They'll have to name call them to justify why they don't want to join.